Hey guys, so this is a video about like just file prep for rigging. Uh, so I'm going to go over a few details that you need to do in your file before you start rigging these characters up. Um, now first of all, uh, we're going to be looking at uh, divisions. So you need subdivisions or you need these edge loops. Uh, you're going to need a, a few around each different joint that's going to be bending. So you'll notice on my knuckles, I have like, or, or on my digits, I have uh, three spans there, you know. Uh, same with these these elbows, you know. The shoulder has a lot of spans in there. Same with the knees. So basically, wherever your model's gonna be bending, you need some uh, extra divisions there, because uh, it'll it'll ease the form as it's like contracting and expanding, you know. So uh, it'll look a lot nicer when you have them. Um, also, some overall details is that in object mode, when you click on your character, um, everything needs to be, be facing towards Z positive. So uh, where this blue arrow is, make sure you're in uh, uh, world axis. You do that by holding W and left clicking over it. You go to world. So then you know that it's facing Z in the world space. Because a lot of auto rigging software uh, works with Z positive facing models. Uh, also, I like to name my model at this point. And I like to have all my meshes combined. You'll notice that like this eyebrow and like the hair and stuff, these are separate meshes, but I just put them on top, you know, like and then mesh combine them. Uh, let's go to modeling. Mesh, I just went to mesh and then combine. And then uh, also your pivot point. I always like to have that be at the character's feet and at world zero. So you can change the pivot point by holding D and adjusting on like each of these different axes. Uh, and then I like to use the snapping methods. So like say my pivot point was, whoops, say my pivot point was like up here. Oh man, say my pivot point was up here. So I want that to be at the feet. So I would hold D and I would hold V and just align that straight to the bottom of those of those feet, and then uh, and then if I was a skew, let me undo that because I had a perfect pivot set up. Then if I was a skew, like say you were modeling over here for some reason, I would always hold X, not D this time because we're not changing the pivot point. We just want to move the entire object to the middle. So I would hold X and snap to the grid on this axis, and then snap on this axis, and then make sure it's snapped on the Y axis as well. So that's some more setup. Also. Um, I, I would go uh, look into your world scale. So see how big this grid is. Uh, and if you look at my channel box, I have uh, values of 111. So that means I'm at my uh, regular scale. I haven't done any sort of changing. You see, if I if I go like this, you'll see that it changed to 1.11. Uh, I'm going I'm to undo that. So you want all, of the, all of these values to be zeroed out. So after you get your model back into the middle and back to the proper scale that you want, uh, you're going to go to Modify and then Freeze Transforms. And then uh, it, it will set your uh, all of your uh, transform values that you have in here to be uh, zeroed out on translation and rotation and then one in uh, scale. And then we're going to go check our uh, preferences. So that was in Windows settings and preferences preferences and you'll see all these settings for everything in Maya um, and we're looking at settings this is set to centimeter so if this grid is at centimeters let's go to meters and then so you, you uh, a meter is about three and some change feet right so if you think about each of these grid lengths being like a little like more than three feet and grandma's super tiny. So basically what we did was we modeled this at the wrong scale. So we're going to, I'm going to go in and you can, um, by the way, you can click and drag over these boxes and then you'll see it'll highlight the last one and I'll just type 100 into there and then scale up grandma. You'll see that we're getting some weird shading artifacts now and that's not due to anything on the model. What that is, is a, uh, a setting in your camera called near and far clip plane. Oh, by the way, before I go fix that, I'm going to go set this back to centimeters and save. 
and we're, we're at uh, grandma's now real world size. So if I go into, where is it, where is it? What was I talking about? Oh yeah, yeah, camera. So to fix this like weird black and gray popping, uh, I'm going to click on this little camera icon here and go to the attribute editor. I'm going to adjust this near clip. I'm going to make this uh, 0.01 now. Let's see if that fixes it. So yeah, yeah, so that, that is just a camera setting and it has to do with when the camera is kind of like trying to render your model and when you when you input values that are like, oh, this can this camera can go super close up to the model, then it gets a little bit confused and uh, leads to some bad uh, bad shading that you saw in the viewport. Um, so yeah, uh, now I'm going to click on back on this. You'll notice that I'm at a hundred in scale and size and translation and rotation are zero. So, but this is the size that I want, right? So I would need to freeze those, uh, those, uh, that scale. I'll do that with freeze transformations. And you can pop open the, uh, the box, the, the option box. And yeah, it's perfect. So I'm going to do that and notice how it reset to one. So then we're good to go. I'm going to save this model. The scene is pretty much prepared. Just make sure the last step, uh, make sure when you're rigging, that you uh, only have the mesh in the scene. This is a default light set and default object set. I believe these are some like default shaders in there. And then this is the shader that's applied to grandma and her mesh. You'll see that it has a bunch of wild values in there. Uh, and then these are just cameras. So you want basically just these basic things and your mesh, and then you're set to go. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that tutorial here, uh, and then uh, yeah, more will, more will follow.